Yes, welcome to lecture two. This is the last part of lecture two. But in the past one was about sources of natural drugs. Yeah, after knowing the sources of natural drugs, we must understand the various ways in which we classify these natural drugs. And the best case seven ways in which we could classify these natural drugs. I'm Kulak Alteric, your cosmogator, that two one zero two of the pharmacology. So this is a reminder about the previous lecture, the sources of natural drugs. And we discussed of these natural drugs with their natural sources. We talked of plants being the latest source of natural drugs, providing us various drugs such as morphine, aspirin, then providing us providing us with cocaine, morphine. Condain. Then we have animals, for example, we talked of snakes providing us venom that we use as anti anti-cancers. We have frogs providing us with drugs such as buffalin. We have sheep providing us with, with wool fat, pigs providing insulin. Then we have minerals such as sulfur, which are which are bacteriostatic. We have marine such as, such as the green algae, the red algae providing us agar agar that we use to treat with cancer. Then we have insects such as bees, honeybees providing us with wax and honey, which are also bacterial. Then lastly, we talked of tissue culture such as vanilla, use of metabolism, use of DNA combinants. So today we shall talk about how do we classify these natural drugs. Because the last lecture is about social natural drugs. So, when we are talking about classification of natural drugs, there are basically seven ways in which we classify these natural drugs. One is about alphabetical classification. With the alphabetical classification, we use either the English name, the Latin name, or the local name to classify the natural drug. Then we have morphological classification. With morphological classification, we based on the morphology of that particular natural drug. For example, we have those that are organized, then we have those that, that are un unorganized. Then the third way that we could classify natural drugs we could depend on the, their taxonomy. And in this, we shall use what we call taxonomic classification. It is mainly strict to it's, it's mainly using plants. Then we have the chemical classification where we shall based on the active ingredient, that particular natural drug to classify those drugs. For example, those drugs with similar chemicals shall be classified in the same group. Then the fifth way we could classify natural drugs is the pharmacological classification. And in this pharmacological classification, we classify drugs depending on their therapeutic importance. Many, many we depend on them at no role. For example, we shall classify drugs that play similar therapeutic roles or medicinal role in one group. Then we have the sixth way we could classify is the chemo taxonomic classification here. We combine the chemistry back in the active ingredient, then the taxonomy of that particular natural drug. It's also restricted to only plants, for you say with the taxonomic is mainly on plants. Then lastly, we have what we call the cell taxonomic. With the cell taxonomic, we also depend, it will also be restricted to only plants with the sense of the taxonomy. So in this case, we shall depend on the soil. That's mainly, that's mainly about it's mainly about that body. We shall see how it is done. So basically, there are seven ways in which we classify natural drugs. One, alphabetical classification, morphological classification, taxonomic, chemical, pharmacological, pharmacotaxonomic, and cell taxonomic. Uh, we can start with one, which is the alphabetical classification. With the alphabetical classification, it is one, it's the simplest way in which you classify natural drugs. We classify these natural drugs depending on their names, the English name, or local name, or Greek name. Greek name sometimes known as Latin. Some of the drug, in some of the dictionaries and defense books, they classify natural drugs depending on this way. We have with examples of Indian pharmacopoeia, whereby for them, they classify, they used to classify drugs using Latin names that was before 1955. Then later, they turned into using English names, that is 1966 up to now. Then we have the British pharmacopoeia, 
for them they use the English name. We have the European Pharmacopoeia, for them they also depend on Latin, on English. The US Pharmacopoeia, they depend on English. For example, what we are meaning with alphabetical classification, if you say maybe this is the actual drug you say, these are wolf fat. Wolf fat is it's a word of English, meaning you have used the English name to classify. For example, if you say this is Nux vomica, Nux vomica is a Latin name for speech name. So you do have used the Latin way. And in this, you have classified. So that's why we said this is the simplest because you only depend on the name. And the advantage of classifying natural drug using alphabetical is that it is easy. That's like we have seen from the example. Then it is quick. Different such the no repetition. For example, if we say mix volume can always be one. The disadvantage is that if you're using this particular type of classification, the origin is not always clear. Then the scientific nature of the drug is not also identified. Then the schedule could classify drugs is basically by morphological classification. And with morphological classification, shall see that we classify drugs either organized or unorganized. So what do you mean with organized? Meaning you're, pick, you're picking that particular drug from a particular part of a plant. For example, if you say roots, stem, back, those are organized drugs. Then unorganized, you're picking those drugs from part, from, <coughs> not from, from just a specific part. For example, for this case, you either pick maybe the sap, the, or latex, or juice. These are examples of organized good drugs. For example, if you say if you are using the bark, you will say that in China or acacia. If you speak of leaves, maybe if you if you pick some some leaves of eucalyptus, then you have picked those morphological part. Then you have rhizomes. Yeah, by rhizomes we could also talk of common garlic. This is Allium sativa. Then you have the ginger that we call as P sodium guandava. We also use the rhizomes. Then we have for flowers, we have an example of pyrethrum, whereby these pyrethrums we always use them to as a calcite. There are many examples. For example, we see with seeds, we have mixed romica, we talked of richness. Sometimes you can use the entire plant, for example, for cases of alpha belladonna. Then for cases of unorganized cool drugs, we could use an example of aloe vera, whereby we pick the dry juice. Then we have opium whereby we pick the latex. Then there's a question that where would we classify parts of maybe products where we, for example, animal products like maybe milk or, or cow dung. Because in some communities they use cow dung to treat some cases. So for this case, cow dung would be part of an organized food drug. The advantage of using morphological is that it is the most simplest way of classification. And the disadvantage is that it is not suitable for drugs that are in powder form. <clears throat> then, if you use this particular form of classification, you can't also know the chemical composition of that particular drug. This is an advantage of using morphological because you only know whether it is organized or unorganized, but the chemical that the drug contains is not known. The third way we could classify natural drugs is taxonomic classification. With the taxonomic, it's only restricted to only plants. We talked of it, and with this, we depend on the taxonomy of that particular plant. What we mean with the taxonomy, we need always to understand the genus, the species, and the family. Because certain plants that are of, that are of similar family or that are of the same family will contain always some particular chemicals that can be used to treat. For example, we can use of family or an acid. In this family, so they always contain alkaloids. For example, this is a case, an example of how they classified Atropa belladonna depending on the taxonomic, being that it is from family, so anase, then the genus is Atropa, then lastly the species belladonna. So we could see that this Atropa belladonna is also in the same family like the thorn apple, which is the cross ammonia. It also coming from the family so anase. Remember, when we are always speaking about families, we always end with letter E. Then, this is also an example, still of taxonomic classification, whereby they are using strictness. Vomica, this is a drug that they always use to inject in cases the population of dogs increase. It's just it's a poison. So, strictness vomica, it's uh, 
genus is Pugnus, then the species is Nuxibomica. This is the family, the family is Lomanaceae. Advantage is that with this, it is with this type of classification, if you're using the taxonomic point, it is precise and it's orderly. For example, if you have seen on the previous ray, this is a bit precise. Then the fourth way we could classify drugs is pharmacological classification. And with pharmacological classification, we always classify drugs of the same medicinal or therapeutic role together. And this is the most relevant and most followed way to classify natural drugs. For example, we could have we could use an example of maybe cardiotonic drugs. In, if cardiotonic drugs is the group, so we classify those drugs that increase the heartbeat. And with an example of this, we have the guitaris, which we obtain from the guitaria, the squeal. So these are classified in the same group. We have maybe we can use another example of CNS depressions. These drugs that are that depress the CNS, that depress the brain. An example is opium, opium, and, and then atropabiladona, which is atropine, which the active ingredient is atropine. Which gives us a drug called atropine, but active ingredient is alkaloid. So opium depresses the brain, and that's the same case with with the adrenaline. So we would classify them as serious depressions, meaning we are classifying drugs that are that are playing similar medicinal role. Another example would be use of serious of cardiac depressions, meaning they depress the heart or the cardiac system. An example we have the chinchona, which is the queen day, that ingredient called the queen day, which depresses the cardiac system with another drug called Vertram. In this case, we would find that, for example, this hammer, sometimes it is difficult to classify some drugs because some drugs play various roles, play different, or play more than one role. For example, if you say of Chichona, Chichona plays, for this case, it's a depression because of the queen day. But remember, we have also Chinchona where that it gives us that contains queen, uh, queen as an active ingredient, yet it is an anti malaria. <clears throat> then we have advantages of this classification is that it is it gives us substitutes. For example, like we have known of one example of anti malaria, whereby yeah, if you know that the, the, one of the anti malaria is queen. In this absence, you could go for its substitute like Atmesia animal, which is a sweet room. The disadvantage is that most some drugs have more than one therapeutic color available to it on the, on the previous slide. The fifth way we could classify natural drugs is the chemical classification, and in this will depend on the active ingredient that that particular drug contains. And then in this will we have carbohydrates. For example, honey, the bee honey for it contains carbohydrates. We have alkaloids, for example, like Atropabiradona, we have the first ammonia, which is Sodom Apple. Then we have Chinchona, those all, those all contain alkaloids. We have aloe vera, aloe vera for it contains glycosides. Then we have Digitalis from the from Digitalia, it also contains glycosides. We have the B-wax, the B-wax is, it, it is classified, it contains many lipids. Then we have Eucalyptus, whereby it contains volatile oils. Understanding this gives you some clue on how some drugs will be extracted. For example, if something, if for example, if you have a contain water oils, meaning if you use heat, these oils may or may be lost because of those temperatures. Advantage is that it is most acceptable and it's informative. Like we have an example of knowing the chemistry can aid you, can help you to understand how you could do. Extract that particular drug depending on the chemical, on the sense of the chemical it contains. The advantage is complex because really we see there are many, many plant, there are many active ingredients, there are many chemicals. It's really complex. The sixth way of classifying is the chemo taxonomic. And with chemo taxonomic, we depend on the chemistry, which is mainly the chemical that it contains, and the taxonomy. So it is also restricted to mainly plants. For example, we'll use an example of this family, the family Soanaceae. Meaning, if you are depending on the taxonomy, you have one family, which is family, to, which is family to anaceae, which contains mainly alkaloids. We use an example of the first ammonium, 
and atropa biaduna atropa biaduna i said the active ingredient in in atropa biaduna is so another colleague just as a guy that we call atropine so atropa biaduna and the trust to ammonium they all they are all from the same family so anase and they contain alcohol so we could classify them in one group and in this way we will be based on the chemo taxonomic classification then last we have the cellular taxonomic classification yeah, but here we depend on the serology serology they are mainly, they are mainly dealing with the blood the antibodies how they react in this case we could use maybe the cellular metabolite we, could, we shall pick plants of the same family then we pick the yeah, chemicals and we test those animals to see how the proteins, how the antibodies produced, will they coagulate like from all from both plant one and plant two? If they coagulate, then the meaning we put them in the similar group for the group performing similar function. So in this case, we depend on the degree of coagulation for those particular antibodies. That's all. Thanks. Thank you.